Okay. Okay. Hello, guys. Uh, nice to meet you. So, my name is uh, Ivao Ivanov. I'm a 3D character artist, and today we are going to do a free open lection, uh, which is a part of a course for real time uh, portraiture. Real time portraiture for cinematics. Now, uh, before we begin, I just want to say that this lection is uh, free of charge. It's completely free and it will be recorded. You can uh, watch it uh, after the stream is done. You can watch it as much as you like. It doesn't matter if you're part of the course or not. Uh, if you want to, after the lection, if you want to continue being a part of the course and uh, follow through with the other lections in which we'll be uh, making uh, a full portrait from start to finish, uh, I've decided the portrait will be uh, Yennefer from the Witcher series of Netflix. So Anya Shalotra is the actress uh, and we're going to make the likeness and uh, everything. I'm going to get into that later. Uh, so if you still want to join, you can co uh, contact the curator and uh, the curator can get you into the course. Uh, if you want to join with colleagues or with a group or something, again, uh, the, the curator will give you conditions, you can let them know and they will tell you what the conditions are to do that. Now, uh, you might see me looking at my screen from time to time uh, while talking. This is because I have uh, some bullet points here written down which I want to follow through uh, so I don't forget to speak about certain stuff. The first thing I want to talk about is the overall what the course will cover. Uh, so this will be like an introduction, we're still going to do some scoping and everything and uh, Q&A uh, but uh, I want to talk about uh, what the follow-up lections will be. Uh, it will cover a portrait workflow from start to finish. Uh, we've titled it uh, creating portraits for cinematics. The reason is I will not be uh, giving uh, any limitations to the portrait in terms of poly count, in terms of texture resolution, texture size, uh, number of assets, or whatever. So this is not uh, uh, this is not something we do for a game. If if we made a portrait for a game, if we made a character head for a game, it, uh, we would have certain limitations. Now this is not the case. We will go after quality, and the course will be uh, kind kind of oriented into improving your portfolios, uh, giving better quality to your portfolios. <clears throat> uh, some faces here I can see in the chat that I already knew. Uh, hi Katya. Uh, okay, so uh, we'll start with uh, high poly scoping. So I'll teach you all about uh, likeness, uh, all about, well, what I know about likeness. Uh, I'll teach you about uh, the human facial anatomy, which is very important. This will be, uh, we'll also go over that in this current lesson a little bit. I'll talk about anatomy. Um, the human an uh, anatomy, the facial structure, some uh, facial uh, rules in terms of uh, how the, the face proportions are and whatnot. Uh, also, I will go over, uh, over how I capture likeness through highlights and shadows which is uh, something like a trick I use, something like a technique that not many people use and I, I find, find it very helpful for likenesses. After that we will go into uh, retopology, uh, retopology and UVing. Uh, I'll do these in Blender since it's a free software. Keep in mind all of the big 3D softwares like Max, Maya, Blender, uh, maybe there are more out there. Uh, can do that. Uh, I chose Blender. We chose Blender at ZBrush 3D projects uh, because um, it's a free tool. Uh, I believe it is the future of 3D. I believe that it's actually better than the other software if you learn to use it. Uh, at least I like it better. And yeah, that's the reason why I'll use Blender for that. I'll also use Blender to do real time hair, which will be hair cards with textures. We'll use Hair Generator for the textures, and also a Blender and a plugin for Blender, which I'll show you for the hair cards. Okay, uh, after that, we'll do texturing. I'll do the texturing using Texturing XYZ as a base. We'll also use Texturing XYZ as uh, as uh, 
space for the uh, skin details. I'll also use, in addition to that, uh, skin brushes, which I'll show you where to get, how to get. Uh, they're open in the market, anybody can get them for the price of $10, I believe it was. The brushes I use. Uh, I don't sell them, I bought them. Now, uh, I'll use Texture XYZ also as a base with the color texture, and then I'll go into Substance Painter and I'll show you how I uh, finish up this texture and make it uh, work in real time. We'll also uh, bake all the maps uh, we can. I, I use, usually I use Substance Designer for baking. You could use Marble Z, you can use uh, Painter as well, you can use X Normal, whatever. Uh, I'll show you how I bake my maps. Uh, there's nothing hard in that. Uh, what else? After texturing, uh, we will get the model and render it in real time. Now, I'm not sure if all of you are familiar with offline rendering compared to real-time rendering, but I believe that real-time rendering is also the future of rendering. Uh, offline rendering is currently a lot slower, but also a lot higher quality. So I'll show you how we can get high quality in real time, but also uh, take advantage of uh, the quickness of real-time rendering and marmoset. it. Now this would be towards the end of the course where I'll show you lighting in marmoset, shaders in marmoset, like skin shaders, eye setup, hair shader. Uh, I think that's about it. Not not much. Uh, not a, a lot of parts related to portraits. But yeah, we can also do a bust and I can show you like a small clothing shader we'll see. Uh, where we get that portrait at, I still haven't planned it. Uh, I still haven't planned the portraits to the full extent. I just know it's going to be uh, Anish Lotra, Yennefer, and yeah, it's going to be rendered in Mamas at Two Back. Now, I just want to say that if you follow the course uh, and you are into making game assets, game characters, uh, this is the same workflow and pipeline I would use for making uh, game characters. The only difference is if I was making a game character I would probably have a budget in terms of poly count and texture size uh, and probably you'd have to get it in an engine like Unreal or whatever the studio uh, you're working with gives you. So yeah, that's that. Uh, Let's get into what I'll be doing today. Uh, the thing I'll be doing today is an exercise for facial uh, facial modeling. It's speed sculpting. Uh, so we'll spend about two hours sculpting a head from scratch from a sphere. And I will talk you through uh, my what's happening in my head while modeling. So I'll talk you through uh, key points uh, for likeness. I'll talk you through uh, anatomy, uh, skill structure, proportions, whatever you name it. Uh, I try and get a lot of information in this open lecture so you can start practicing uh, in, a, in a good manner. So after that we'll do a QA. and a uh, We'll have about an hour left for the Q&A or something so if you have any questions or Yep, I can move my camera a little lower. One second. So if you have any questions as I'm modeling, as I'm sculpting, I have a full hour. Oops. This is a Logitech camera. It's a little clunky. One second, guys. I got it. How's the camera? <clears throat> now, uh, I'll be looking at the other monitor so you won't have a chance to look at my face all the time because uh, I'm working on two monitors and the one I'll be sculpting at, uh, the one you're seeing, my art station, is on the left. Keep that in mind. Okay, that's a little bit too low. Is that good? Is that is the camera good now? Let me know if you're ready to begin. Let me know if the sounds good and if the camera is good. And let's start scoping.
So guys, just let me know in the chat if uh, everything's okay, you see my screen, you see my camera, you can hear me well, and we can begin. Seems to be okay, okay. Let's go. So uh, let's start with a sphere, and uh, I'm thinking about doing a male head, and let me just start. I'll start with the mouse while using the move tool. Uh, I just find the mouse uh, easier with the move tool. So, uh, of course, we'll sculpt in symmetry, so I'll press X, go into symmetry. I uh, usually use matcap gray at the start. And let's just make a uh, head like shape first. Uh, get this in Dynamesh. I work in Dynamesh in the beginning. Something though, like 64. And that's a little bit too much for the start. 24. That's a little too low, but it will do uh, just to get the shape going. Um, so now I'll just build from the side uh, the face, and you can use actually uh, this icon here just like a pointer. But in general, once you find uh, the cranium, which is an angled egg, so basically this thing here, let me get a uh, masking glass just so I can show you. Uh, this is uh, an egg to which there's an attached face. So I would get the face from the side view. Now, uh, since we are making a male head, uh, I'm going to make a squarer jaw from the side. Now, uh, after we have this, we can just extract some base neck. Uh, I'll use the edge polish brush just so I can get uh, a good flat surface here from which I can extract the uh, neck which is going to be like a tree <laughs> trunk or simply a cylinder uh, so let's mask this I'll use the mask, to mask pen and I'll take out the neck now, uh, while I'm doing this, uh, keep in mind this is something you need to practice a lot. When you have the free time, just scope the head. It doesn't have to be a perfect head, but take an hour, take two hours of your day. Uh, if you want to be a character artist and start sculpting heads, uh, I believe it's the most important part of a character, unless you have uh, a mask on, on your character. If the face is visible, it's the most important part. The other is a silhouette, but we won't get into that in this course. Uh, so now, uh, I'll, obviously this head is a little bit too thin, so there are some key components now. Uh, the widest part of the face would be uh, right behind your ear, so around here. This is the widest part of your head, not of your face, excuse me. So this is where you want the widest point to be. And then the widest point of the face would be the zygomatic process. I'll get into that later, uh, which is basically the cheekbone. Uh, let me just get a quick neck here. Now, how do I find the right place? For the zygomatic, uh, I mean the cheekbone, um, the mouth, the nose, whatever, the eyes. And it actually starts by something not many people take their time with, which is the ear, me included. Oh, I don't like sculpting ears. So, uh, not the ear, but the ear hole. So now I already have established kind of a jawline here. Uh, right uh, behind it would be the ear hole. I would pick uh, a point for it around here. Now, with the ear hole, we can find a lot of things. For example, we can find the width, uh, the length, I mean, of uh, the face from a side view. Which would be actually is the width, yeah, if we look at it in 2D. Uh, we find the nose bridge. So let's just make a quick nose bridge. We find the distance from the nose bridge, we multiply it, and the distance from the uh, 
back of the head to the ear hole should equal the distance from the ear hole to the nose bridge here. Okay. So once we find that, let me just suggest that shape. Once we find that, we can go here and start. I usually use the damp standard for this just to start the line. I can start this line. This is actually going to be the zygomatic process or the cheekbone. Uh, this will go into the orbitals right here. They spin in right behind the nasal bone. Uh, you have a V shape continuing in here from the orbitals. This, the superior margin uh, on top of that. The superior margin of the orbitals is ba basically that part of the orbitals which is relative to the frontal bone, uh, which is uh, your forehead. Okay, uh, from it we can start the temporal line, basically. Now this obviously needs a lot of adjustments, so I'm just going to take my time to adjust this uh, in terms of proportions. Um, and then we'll get into building the zygomatic. Okay, we said already behind the ear hole we have the widest point of the head. Let's make uh, the forehead, uh, the cranium a little bit bigger. Now, distance from your nose, now this is the nose bridge, which should be higher. Like this, and then from here on, we have the cartilages creating the tip of the nose and the nose rails around here. Now, this distance from uh, the nose bottom to the uh, eyebrows it should be equal to the, for, to the distance from the eyebrows to the hairline. So, if we take a measure here, we can see that our cranium is still a little bit smaller than it should be, so I'll expand the head like this. Just like that. Now I'll get the shape from all the angles. Uh, here I'm using just my visual library that I have acquired over the years, coping heads. I just know how kind of the face, the head should look from different angles. Uh, I don't take my time a lot uh, with this, uh, with the perfect shapes right now. I'm just building a base. But in general, uh, I'm just going over the head from different points of view, making sure that it's looking you know, humanic, you know, just kind of looking like a human. Okay, now we have the nose out, we have uh, some uh, cavities here which remind us of eye sockets or orbitals. Let's start building some planes. Now, if we have our zygomatic here as the widest point, let's just mark it right around here, the cheekbone. Uh, what usually happens is the bottom of the zygomatic, this tip here, which should equal with the bottom of the nose, shoots out this muscle, which is our smiling uh, base muscle, the zygomaticus major. So this creates usually a plane. Uh, especially with skinnier people. I want to go with a skinnier person. Uh, now, we can build some volume here on the mouth. And also, uh, let's actually increase the resolution. Right now it's a little bit too low. Uh, let's go to 64 maybe. Yeah, that should be right. Uh, I try and keep things in a very low resolution. So right now we have about 29,000 polys. I try and keep it that way uh, for a long time. 
Okay, so basically right now I'm just going to build some uh, plane structures. Uh, those plane structures are based on muscle, fat, and skull working together to create uh, you know different shapes. Uh, this uh, this structure here is uh, the depressor muscle, so uh, it's the uh, depressor levi muscle, uh, which is uh, the outer muscle of the mouth. Uh, this creates the orbicularis oris uh, area, which is basically a bundle of muscles merging into the mouth. Uh, so I'm going to build this really quickly. Uh, as you can see, I use the H polish a lot. Uh, so basically, uh, if I use the smooth, I kind of lose some of the curvature that I have on the face. I want to keep it. So I'm going to build the chin right now. What traditional sculptors usually do uh, to find the mouth, they take from the bottom of the mandible, which is your bone here. So it's not properly built, but let's say we have the mandible from here to here. Uh, one third of it should be added as bulk right here. So actually the nose goes into the face from a side view. Uh, it doesn't stick out, so the nostrils are kind of inside the face. Okay. Let me just smooth this, make it a potato, and then we'll kind of refine it. Now, as you can see, the face is looking pretty weird from uh, this side angle. Let's go ahead and fix this by building the uh, superciliary arches. Just get a volume in there, it doesn't have to be all perfect. Remember, we are making a simplified uh, head for now and then we'll get into uh, refining it. Push the forehead to the outside, it looks like a Neanderthal right now. Uh, so I need to work on that. Expanding the mandible. We can build a masseta here, just so we have a little bit of a volume. Uh, basically, the mandible has this angle right here, which is a point to which the masseta is attached to, uh, and it goes in this direction into the bottom of the zygomatic process here. And then the zygomatic process goes over it. Uh, usually, there's a hole in here and the uh, mandible, uh, the masseta, excuse me, uh, goes out, shoots fibers out here and this is actually known as the temporalis muscle inside the temporal line. We can build some uh, basic three planes of the forehead right around here. The glabella, glabella region, excuse me. I feel like this is protruding a little bit too much. And I need a little bit more 
depth here. The forehead is obviously too far back, too small right now. Widen it, widen it up from the front of you as well. Just building some more planes here for the frontal bone. Now, uh, the things about the thing you should know about the orbitals, uh, it's a very important structure in here. So one of the things is the orbitals usually have a couple of angles. So if we split them up, there's this top angle which is kind of angled upwards. Uh, this is also, as I said, the superior margin. So this is part of the frontal bone. Where this meets with the uh, zygomatic process, so there's like a cracking here. Uh, this is actually one millimeter in, on top of where the eyelids are attached so there would be an eye here usually. Then we have that neutral angle right here which is kind of v-shaped from a side view. Of course it depends on the person but usually it is. Now there's also uh, two angles on the bottom. One is uh, kind of like this. The other one is spiraling in into the uh, nasal bone uh, right here uh, below the superior margin. So basically the superior margin is called that because it's bigger, expands further outside the face protecting the eye. So I'll lower the talking just a bit just to get those structures done here uh, get this looking a little bit cleaner smooth out Now, this line I just made is the point where the separation between the zygomatic and the molar fat, which begins right from above the nose and below the orbital. Now, how the molar fat looks depends entirely on your age. Uh, since I'm going to try and make an aged male, I'm going to kind of uh, make it sag a little, meaning there will be a little bit of a cavity here, a little bit of uh, kind of, yeah, since it's feeling a fascia inside the uh, skull, uh, it's going to be a little bit indented, just like this. Now, the this smaller fat creates kind of this plane change that uh, it seems like it's merging with the uh, depressor muscle, so they kind of work in together right around here to create this. So I'm going to just get it down a little better.
I'm going to merge this, create a line in here for the Zygomaticus, don't forget it, Zygomaticus Major, your smiling muscle. Create that uh, line for the Masetta, rebuild it. Just going to mask where the lips would be. I think we might need a little bit more of a resolution, but let's just build some shapes and then we'll see where we at. Building uh, the gel fat right around here, creating some plane changes. Again, I'm using my uh, mental library that I have built, knowing some of the shapes and how they're going to look from different angles. Uh, you can also use reference from that. Right now, I'm not using any reference, I'm just building ahead entirely from you know, memory. Uh, kind of know my way around heads but obviously uh, you would be using a lot of reference uh, me included when um, making a portrait of somebody let's fix that ugly forehead now and cranium I'm going to build a little bit from the recorder's view, making sure the shapes are looking as they should be. Okay. I can see some activity in the chat right now. I'm not reading it, but I'll get back uh, into the chat later on. Creating some plane changes here for the zygomatic process. Smoothing them out. If it looks a little bit too harsh, don't worry, we can fix that later.
Now I'm trying to look at the three quarters. Uh, one of the most important, to me, it's the most important part, the zygomatic process and its volumes, including the orbitals. Uh, I'm trying to get it right from the angles here. Now if you get the zygomatic right, chances are it's going to look good. Let's build some fat around the masseta. Go the head into the neck. And then we're going to add just a little bit more resolution to this. Oops, that's really ugly here. take a lot of time with the neck, just one second, get back into the face, just so I, I don't hate it too much. Now you can see from the top view, uh, I'm aiming to get a wider head at the back, point here, at the front, Now I'm going to bring in those orbitals. Define the mandible. See yeah, that bottom view it looks pretty terrible now, so we need to fix it. Okay. So, let's look at this and just add some volume around here just so we have something that's not a cavity. As if his eyes are closed, maybe. Something like that. I'm going to again define the molar fat. I'm going to split it up. Let's make a skinny person leaving that cavity here visible. You know, just the base shapes. I 
Let's give him a more interesting nose right now. It's a little bit. Firstly, it's too flat because the molar fat needs to go in like this. Secondly, we need, I want it to be a little bit more crooked. So, uh, a Roman's nose. Noble Roman nose. Is that how they call it? Basically, an ugly one. Now I'll be building a little bit of those nasolabial uh, folds. Again, those are because of the molar fat. You're outside and kind of merge in with the. Uh, should they should go a little bit more to the inside? Yeah, like this, and they kind of merge in with the depressor here, creating that uh, that plane change that I talked about. Let's take some time with this. Uh, actually, I need a little bit more resolution. Uh, we're at 64. Let's go to 100. That should be enough. Let's find the lips. Now, to find the lips, we already have some established nose, uh, some eyes out there. Not eyes, but blocks of stuff. Uh, so, basically, that space you have from your nose to your uh, chin, uh, usually it should kind of equal uh, the nose tip to the eyebrows uh, and then you have to the hairline, as I said, again, nose tip to eyebrows to the hairline. Usually that's the case. You can measure it on your monitor easily. Uh, so obviously I'm going to bring the chin down a little bit. Now I've found the, I, I will find the lips. How I find the lips is uh, again, you measure the distance from your tip of uh, the no the bottom of your nose to the tip of your chin, right here, and right in the middle is where usually the bottom lip will sit. So if I measure this right here and I find the middle around here, this is where the bottom lip would sit, right? And I would just make sure to define it right around here. Just get a line in. I'll push this out. Uh, now the lips kind of stick out. Uh, they're not just carvings. They have their. There's a lot of muscles in here. The depressed inferioris. We have the mentalis muscle in here. Now there's this. Bird right in here. This is where all the muscles from the orbicularis oris group kind of uh, cross paths. Now we'll go into more details uh, in the course about the anatomy, but uh, you should, uh, if you don't plan to stay in the course, uh, if you want to scope faces, you should definitely learn anatomy. You don't have to be a medical expert, but you should learn it. Uh, I would recommend the Anatomy for Sculptors books. Uh, they have one for the full body, one for facial expressions. You can uh, just Google Anatomy for Sculptors and they'll come out. They also have a page in ArtStation. So, yeah. I'm just building a filtrum here. Uh, usually, the filtrum, uh, the lips are separated into three parts. Those are three fat pads that we have for the top lip, which is there's a middle one and a lateral one. Lateral one, uh, which is the one to the outside. Okay, and for the bottom one, we have two. 
right now we don't have the resolution to go into secondary forms uh, so just stick with a good base and keep on moving around now push the bottom lip inside the top one Ooh, what an ugly guy. Obviously the proportions from the sides are pretty messed up. Now for the angle of the eyes, uh, we can see the eyes are too flat. Basically, uh, the eyes follow the orbital angle, which is about 15 to 20 degrees. You can see the orbital angle here go to the bottom there's a if we draw a line here it would be about 15 to 20 degrees the eyes need to follow that and they also once we add an eyeball later on they are going to follow the eyelids are going to follow the eyeball as well in terms of uh, you know uh, volume now in terms of angle they should follow the orbitals the eyeballs themselves are kind of looking to the sides And again, guys, uh, keep the questions coming, but keep in mind I will be answering them uh, in about so in about an hour or so. I'll, I'll start answering questions. I'll go throughout the whole chat, so don't worry. I won't miss your question. Uh, at least I hope so. Now the nose, uh, we need to build it up a little bit. happens. Sometimes ZBrush freezes, uh, you can out and tap and it's going to fix it. It's a bug since the creation of ZBrush still hasn't been fixed, so keep that in mind. I'll work on that side view again some more. Do some measurements. Uh, Okay. Now for the nose, usually uh, the nose, once we have that crook here, we can know that this is where the nose nasal bone kind of ends and the cartilages begin. So the parts, uh, this part from here to here is usually based on cartilages, fat and different stuff like this. Uh, the basic structure here is you have those cartilages shooting in from here. Usually you have your uh, muscle here, I think it's called the nasalis muscle, uh, right outside here so this is not the molar fat if you have a line vis uh, visible here it's the muscle shooting from uh, the, the nose cartilage let's build a nose tip make it interesting have those dents in here usually Mark some nose rows. Again, uh, you can see I'm staying in pretty low res uh, for quite some long, and I simply like to take my time with the base forms because I believe for facial modeling, uh, base forms are everything. Uh, 
and if you don't have base forms correct, nothing on top of that will sit correctly. Again, as I said, the nose should go inside the face. Pull that chin out. Feel like the forehead needs to go to the front a little. Now let's build some planes of the nose in here. Just kind of, we don't have a lot of resolution, just kind of mark them. You know, the ones spiraling in to the nose rows. Then we have uh, the nose rows themselves. Uh, the, the, yeah, the nose rows themselves uh, have two planes merging into those cavities in here and the nose tip. Plane changes basically. And you should, of course, study a lot of uh, planar heads. And kind of, uh, while studying them, try and get an idea what causes the plane changes. Is it a fat pad? Is it a muscle group? Is it uh, a landmark of, uh, you know, a bony landmark of the skull? Or something like that. Once you learn to make associations of that in your head, uh, planes with anatomy, uh, you know, you can then get into uh, looking at a reference and trying to spot uh, different parts of the face. For example, you're sculpting a female, you see, you know, she kind of has a big bulge in here, and you can say, Okay, so my scope needs a lot more gel fat because my reference has more gel fat. Uh, you don't see, you start seeing, you know, the underlying structure of the face, not just some volumes and shapes that look different in different lighting, different photos, different expressions. You need to know what those are. Yeah, I'm just building that depressor. Now, uh, the cool thing about this course, and actually uh, why it's different than a tutorial, uh, is with the students, I usually uh, I keep a lot of contact with them. I give homework assignments, and I also give feedbacks. So, this, uh, if you're wondering, uh, what's the difference with a tutorial on Gumroad? You know, this is all live. This is uh, happening with my feedback and my assistance throughout the whole thing. Again, um, building a little bit of a plane change here, just very slight, basically, you see this triangle here. This is from the, uh, since this guy is pretty skinny, this is the Zygomaticus Major, just pulling in here. And if uh, this guy smiles, this muscle will contract, and this is where the uh, curve will be of the smile. You can see it's shooting directly from that zygomatic process you know the bottom of it which lies with the bottom of the nose again I feel like we need to build a little bit more of a, a setter here 
Uh, let's lower the focus shift just so I see a little bit more of that clay buildup alpha. Now in terms of sculpting with ZBrush, I just use the basics, you know, I use like four brushes or something. So uh, <laughs> if uh, you intend, if you think I'm going to teach you some incredible ZBrush tricks, tricks I'm, I'm not like a software a guru or something. Uh, I can just teach you uh, sculpting, but you know, in terms of making my own brushes, I don't do that. Uh, I buy brushes. Uh, <laughs> I don't use a lot of brushes. You know, I use some brushes for skin alphas, uh, some other stuff like IMM brushes on the internet. But yeah, I use the basics in terms of everything. If you can make it work with the basics then it's looking good. Uh, the thing about real-time portrait is uh, when you get the model inside uh, when you get the model inside Marmoset Marmoset in real-time rendering usually is really good at showing you how bad your model is. So that's why I spend a lot of time on the base and I spend a lot of time on the sculpture and I believe no amount of good texturing, good lighting, good shading is going to fix a bad sculpture that's why even with my personal projects I constantly go back uh, start over on the scope, start over on the scope until I get it right so if somebody asks me what would be the most important part of portraiture is the, of course, the sculpting, the making the realistic face. Come on. I got it. So we are one, one hour in, uh, I'll be scoping for one more hour and then I'll start answering some questions. Uh, now let's just focus on the scope and after that while I'm answering the questions uh, I'll continue scoping so I'll give you like a pretty okay -ish head in the end I hope. And as a bonus, uh, I'll make this head available for download in the end. So I'll just upload it to WeTransfer and give you guys a link if you want to download it and play around with it. Let's fix it from the three quarters right now. I don't like it. Uh, also, you can notice I'm working in orthographic view right now. That's because I'm not using any reference. Usually, I would work in... Uh, uh, in perspective, but I would use a very low field of view, like 15, for example. Uh, the reason being is that I don't like to work with photo reference that is uh, very, very high in perspective. The distortion is too big, it's hard to get a hold of, you know, the uh, proportions and whatnot. Uh, so uh, I usually work with photos that are from a little bit further away. Uh, or a little bit uh, less perspective on them and this way when I transition from ZBrush into Marmoset since you know ZBrush doesn't have a good camera field of view uh, doesn't have a good perspective it still works kind of like a 2.5D program uh, what I do is I work in lower perspective so when I get it into Marmoset I still work in lower perspective and they're very similar you know they kind of look the same if I did this for for a client though, if I did this for a game or for, for example, a cinematic that's going to be rendered, let's say, in Unreal, I'm going to work in about 30 perspective, 30 to 40 
just because uh, when you get that in Unreal, uh, you know, it would distort it a lot. Okay, let's play around now a little bit more with the Zygomatic. Uh, let's insert some ears, as I said. I'm not a fan of scoping ears too much. Uh, let's focus on the face. Or was it IMM body parts? We should have like a base here. here. Okay. Some giant ears right here. Uh, I'll make sure that the ear is kind of uh, the length of the nose. Uh, since this is going to be like you know, an older guy, let's say in his 50s, older gentleman, I'm going to make the ears slightly bigger, more elongated. Uh, since they'll be starting to sag as we age. Something like that. Of course, we need to give that a lot of work. I think the head here is a little bit too big. Uh, I'll use the inflate brush for ears a lot. Just go that, go in, inflate that. Push it in. I'm going to mask this uh, outer part. I use a lot of masking when working. I like overlaps. They kind of give that. I'll push this out and I'll change this. Push this in. Again, this is strictly from my you know mental library, uh, imagination, you may call it. It's basically just years of work on my mind. I've seen those years somewhere and now I'm doing them in 3D. Now the ears seem a little bit too small here. And keep in mind we need to get the ear hole, uh, here's a trick, we need to get the ear hole uh, aligned uh, with uh, the zygomatic process. So the, the ear hole should be a little bit to the top of this curve here, so somewhere around, along here should be the ear. Around and the trick is so you can get the move topological to draw size of one and move the entire mesh. Let's get some poly groups, uh, outer groups, get this, carve it in here. Obviously, we still haven't broken symmetry, so uh, this will help a lot with, you know, selling the character. We may give him some high symmetry, so we'll make him a little bit more interesting. Something like that. Okay, let's not drag the Dynamesh still. 
let's get into uh yeah i wanted to get that zygomatic process done correctly so here are some here's some planes of the zygomatic process okay so we have the orbitals right around here so i'm going to mark them now so right outside of this circle is where my orbitals edges would be now the first plane of change is right around here uh, you can easily spot it if you go from a three quarters view like this and you have that pouch right in here I would actually from that three quarters view push this in a little this area here should be flat we have one more angle right around here where this is kind of flatter yeah. okay now uh, here's another plane which is right the bigger one right around here and it should go and create this flat kind of area. It's not entirely flat but it's almost flat. And I'll use the H polish for it and push it out. And then we have that plane here which kind of merges in with this one creating that outside shape of the uh, the definition of the cheekbones kind of. Okay Now this kind of continues, this plane continues in here, that's because of the uh, zygomaticus major muscle. You know, that's why we have that uh, distinction here. Okay, so let's clean this up with the H polish now. I also start using like the low intensity with the clay buildup, just filling those areas up, making them a little bit more pretty to look at. You might already realize I'm a very messy <laughs> guy when it comes to sculpting or whatever. I'm messy in life in general, but in the end, it's going to work. Okay, so we have that. Let's see the uh, angles now. Okay, like this. I like this. I think we could push this out a little bit more, you know, that side here. Since he's a male, those borders here where the zygomatic process and the frontal bone meet should be a little wider than what it would be for a female, for example. Okay. Now the eyes seem a little bit too sad. Too sad. I don't like to make make them too sad. We're going to build some eyes. Don't worry. Uh, for now, I'm just going to keep him sleeping, so I don't bother with them. Oh no, that's too bad. Okay, now let's build in uh, that molar fat, make it a little better as well. I want to have the biggest cavity right in here. So again, I'm going to use the damp standard just to mark where I want my cavity to be. because it kind of spirals in here. Okay, we have a little bit of a connection here for the zygomatic major, zygomaticus major. Then we are going to make sure this falls down onto the nasolabial, uh, nasolabial folds. Let's go right outside the nose here and connect right around here. There 
go outside of the depressor. The depressor creates that visible plane change on the chin right below it. So we have a kind of a flat surface, in, uh, kind of a flat surface in here. Let's build this boat. Give some fat around here. This is the upper jaw fat. Just then, and the bottom jaw fat. It's usually the superior and inferior jaw fat. I call it the upper and the, the bottom because <laughs> it's easier. Now, uh, a lot of people ask me why do you try and remember those names? Uh, first of all, because I have to teach them to you. Second of all, uh, it's easier to overall uh, make those references I talked about. When you think about the things with the actual names, but you don't have to remember you know, the medical terms, but you need to have some terms made up for yourself for those parts, different parts of the face, different structures and different features. Let's increase the intensity a little bit. So right here we have that uh, another plane change uh, which is basically it creates this triangle here of highlights with most people. This is the Zygomaticus minor. It connects right in here. And the molar fat going over it usually creates that plane change. Now if the person is older, this is where the uh, nasolabial fat, uh, nasolabial folds start to kind of sag in. Just going to fill up this area here. Now, uh, when you make the nasolabia fats uh, folds, why do I call them fats all the time? Uh, nasolabial folds. So you have this triangle here. Keep that in mind. This is a cavity. This is because uh, you have the depressor muscle just going right outside here, the orbicularis oris muscle basically around the mouth, uh, filling up these this area, and then. Uh, uh, this part remains flat while the molar fat and the nasolabia folds go right over it. I'm just going to find my triangle here. Now for the nose, let's just get a little bit more of an interesting shape here. Make sure we can see that uh, bridge between the uh, bone and the cartilages. Push in the eyes a little bit. Let's make some. Uh, let's try and make some uh, eyebrows here. Give him like a little bit of an expression. Uh, maybe we can make him a little bit uh, kind of grumpier. So you have now the frontalis muscle pushing this in. With the superior margin being visible on the outside here, remaining visible, the 
is kind of going in, creating those wrinkles on the forehead. Here are the fibers, the muscle, uh, basically it's going in those directions. So we can kind of mark them in. Like this. Now the whole structure of the forehead is in those waves, meaning if we create it uh, like wrinkles, they would follow this kind of, you know, uh, dent. You know, he's frowning. This goes in. Going to put now the eyes seem a little bit too big to me. I would actually get them out. You know, make space for the caroncula. I know they're right now they're placeholders, but we'll start building them really shortly. Just wanna get some more stuff done. Now another important thing is I'm going to draw you a line of what the outline of the face is. Okay. Most people when they work with reference you try and get this part of the mandible, the bone, outside like this to kind of get the outline of the face getting a really ugly jaw. Actually what defines the outline of the face, the jaw here, is that line here and this is left in shadow in here, okay? Uh, this is the boat from the Masetta, that jaw fat and you know the mandible kind of being left on the back view, uh, the bottom view. Okay. Going to fill this up a little bit more here. Using the inflate just to get some forms uh, done right. Terrible. Now let's get that V shape in here. It's bugging me. Uh, definitely, this needs to go to the back a little. The eyes need to stick out a little bit more when you go to that quarter view.
Time's good. Let's get some uh, just a little bit more fat around the masetta. Right now it's a little bit too too clunky. needs a lot of work right now you can see it's a little bit too flat so let's bring this in just like that let's push this out with the standard you know that skin being squashed by the eyebrows frowning From a side view, uh, the forehead's looking weird. I pulled it for some reason too much. Now, remember, this should be an egg angling up, so I'll bring those that down a little bit, that part of the cranium. Now let's make separation here. I want to separate those nasal labia folds, kind of just give a little bit more of a detail. Building the filtrum, I'll make it uh, visible where it goes inside the nose. Let's give him like a butt chin. <laughs> make him sexy for the ladies. Now I'm looking at it from different views. I think I can pull this zygomatic process just a little bit in, sticking out too much from that angle. I like it around here. Around here it's sticking out. So I just do this. A little bit of pulling and pushing is not bad. Just define the neck a little bit better. Really quickly, I just want to get the the shape and I'll leave it maybe make an Adam's apple for him he's older so we have some muscles here starting to sag. 
you won't have that with the NFP. <laughs> but of course, uh, with M we can kind of afford it just because it looks interesting. Get the get those muscles into the clavicle. Go like this. Just spiral in. Let's get back to the face now, because we don't have too much time. And this neck is not that important. One second. Okay, now back to the nose. Just get get it up looking good from the front. I'll flay this inwards. There's a cavity here. I'll push this inwards. Create the glabella region, which is basically the orbitals here going right outside of the nasal uh, bone kind of merge again it'll be really visible now that he's frowning but you have like a plane change here usually We also have a plane change here because of the superciliary arches. And of course that bulge from the frowning. a little bit more of a square jaw just slightly make sure we have like a bow right outside here about two fingers in from your mandible is where that tipping point of the masset is all right we can get this to like a higher subdivision now and give him some eyes, uh, maybe some wrinkles, stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's safe to do so. Just fix the cranium. We made it smaller earlier, now I'll make it back. <laughs> I'll pull it back and make it bigger again. It's constantly playing around with these things to get the result I'm looking for. Now I'll just focus on cleaning this up before uh, cleaning those forms up before we get into the higher uh, resolution of Dynamesh and doing the eyes. We have about half an hour which is more than enough at least it should be, unless I screw it up.
Uh, I want to get that eyebrow out like this from the quarter view. Building uh, that uh, change of planes here on the frontal bone, you know, it's kind of like a triangle. And the temporal line kind of starts inwards in here, so I'm going to fix that. Let's build a little bit of a temporal muscle. Temporalis, I mean. Fat. Again, looking at different angles from a distance, fixing the overall shape, the silhouette. Good trick you can do is do this. Using the flat color. But I don't use it, but maybe you would. I don't know. Which is going to play around the cranium shape and make it a little bit pointier at the top. It's, I don't know, that's my favorite cranium shape when sculpting, just making a point here at the top and it just looks cool. I wouldn't want to have that, but you know, on a model, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. I think we can build some mice. Uh, just that angle here. Mm, yeah, we definitely lost that angle. Plus, better. Uh, the angle of the zygomatic process going into the zygomaticus major. I'm just going to rebuild it and then get into the eyes. If I don't see anything else that's wrong. Slightly smooth this out. Very careful.
Let's make a little bit of a sagging in here. Just a little. I feel like proportions are a little bit messed up, so I'm just going to take some measurements. I feel like maybe the head could be wider. Like this. And the nose, I want to touch it from the bottom view here. Give it give it some love. We didn't spend a lot of time on the nose. Let's do it now. Let's create an interesting tip. Okay. Am I using the basic material? I didn't even use the mat. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's give the basic material a little bit of a shine to make this pop. So I'm just going to play with the specularity curve, something like this, and maybe a dark, uh, darker color. So something like that. And I think the cranium is kind of I I almost never get that cranium right on the first try maybe because I'm not used to doing it usually my characters have hair but it's important to get it okay so now let's get some eyes in I'm going to show you how I do my eyes uh, the most important thing is always have a sphere now the reason our eyes are shaped the way they are the eyelids is because the eyeball uh, inside is altering the shape. For example, if you have a person uh, with their eyes gouged out, well, maybe you've never seen a person like that, but if you did, you'll notice that uh, the eyelids are kind of shapeless, you know, they're kind of flat. That's because there's no eyeball in to keep that shape of the eyelids. So that's why when we are making a person who doesn't have his eyelids gouged, uh, it's important to get the eye ball in. So I'll just get it right in here. I'll put it in front of this side just so I get the size right. I think this is about, it's an okay size. Maybe it should be just a little bit bigger like this. Now, uh, the eyeball is not perf a perfect sphere. It's actually a little bit of a horizontal ellipse. So I scale it a little bit like this. And then once I do this, I will find, uh, let's enable dynamic, I will find that front of the eye where the iris, for example, would be. I'll push it out just a little bit just so I know where the tip is. Let's do that again. Okay, just so I know where the tip is, where the iris would be. Just like that. Then I would go to the top view. Uh, let's get this flat color just so we see. Get this to the middle. And I would rotate it outwards. So our eyes are following this angle of the orbital, our eyeballs, uh, which is about 15 to 20 degrees of the orbital's angles. So we are kind of looking at the two sides. Very often people would do the eyes like this, 
both of them and in certain shots the character will look cross-eyed so this is why uh, it's important to avoid that also it would give you a more correct volume kind of of the eyelids so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy what we already have I'm just going to mask the area around it because I don't want to destroy that and the eyebrows as well and let's just push this in increase the intensity using the mouse currently I want full intensity just like that now we can actually see if we have the correct size for that eyeball I would say it's smaller than it should be no it's actually quite, quite right I think I think just our orbitals are a little bit too elongated so what you usually do is just play a little bit now with the orbitals get them right Okay, uh, it's important to know that the eyeballs are inside the orbitals. Uh, you know, that's the whole idea of the orbitals, to protect the eyeball. So, uh, a lot of people do this. Like, no, there is quite a depth to your face. It's not a flat face. So, do we have that angle here? Yeah, we have it. And now, once I have found that iris, I will simply smooth this out. Uh, I will add a little bit more of a boat in here. Oh, and the intensity. Let's make sure we have like a visible circle. And I will go and create my eyes. Let's think of a shape. Maybe an olive shape. It's important to play around with the side. We want depth. So I would go and actually go with the mask band here. Do we have a photo shift? No. So much spacing. About here is where the eyes will, the eyelids will cover. We need a little bit of space left. Uh, what's happening though? Why am I painting? Am I using gradient? Yes. Okay, uh, getting that corner of the eyes right. Right here, where the caroncula would be, uh, at stop. I'll mask this out. Okay, just getting a, a good shape. Uh, 
don't spend too much time because it's not going to look good anyways we need to extract it now so I would extract 0.01 uh, something like that and I would quickly remesh it <laughs> I know it looks really ugly but we'll get it right uh, I think the eyeball might be actually too big we'll see uh, let's click uh, do a quick Z remesh wait it out we got about 15 minutes left and after that I'll start taking in some questions did I zero measure the right thing? yes let's smooth it out I'll use the inflate right after and now I'll try and get the right shape now the important thing here is to make sure your top eyelid, at least when your character is looking straight at the camera, uh, your character is looking just straight, uh, usually a top eyelid would go in front of the bottom one, like this. Now the corner around the coroncula would be out a little. Let's see this from top view. Yeah, something like this should be the the bottom and top view. So we have the eye protruding to the back a little bit more than it would be from the nasal uh, point of view. So the lateral corner would be farther back than the nasal corner is what I'm trying to say. Let's see, Yo, the eye is too huge, so I'm just going to hide the head, unmask this, and then go hit the scale, select multiple, actually let's just mask this, and unhide it, now it's not going to make sure the eye size is about as big as the nose so this is actually quite good yep about this size okay uh, Now, the how the eye is connected. We already said the lateral corner connects right below uh, the superior margin, one millimeter from it. So the superior margin would be where that around here, where that uh, V shape is. Uh, that's where the superior margin would start. Oh wait, we have that mask. So right around here, one millimeter below it is about here. Okay, so I'm just going to attach this the the eye. And the nasal one is pretty much just pull horizontally and it should sit about uh, it should sit lower than the lateral corner not sure about the uh, you know distance in terms of centimeters and millimeters but you know about the same uh, distance that the lateral corner has from the superior margin It looks like he has uh, alien eyes for now. We'll see what happens. 
just making sure this is clean uh, we don't need to have like a very edgy corner here uh, the eyes have a smooth corner to them the eyelids now the upper eyelid is usually thicker uh, that's because the tarsal plate which is that uh, surface below the eyelid below the skin is uh, thicker and bigger uh, three times the size of the bottom one yeah maybe if we disable this Okay, about that. Let's build some orbital fat now. I'm going to leave this place blank for now because I will do a trick to have a clean workflow with the eyes. So I'm just going to fill up the bottom part and I'll show you what I do with the eyes. So basically let's get this looking a little bit better the eyes are looking too big to me still push in the orbitals, the bottom ones let's make this out okay now let's merge uh, I'm going to duplicate this so where's the duplicates the formation of oh, that's a mirror geometry as subtle duplicate and now I'm going to mirror it to the other side uh, I get this down and merge those together okay I know really scary right now don't worry it always looks like this until I fix it uh, so I'm going to go geometry so to duplicate the formation mirror for the eyeball as well we need to fix that shape <laughs> uh, okay let's go and just inflate this a little bit so we have connecting points dynamesh 120 would be a good resolution to match those so now let's re-establish some stuff like the bottom orbitals here Filling up some orbital fat, I realize that I need to pull down the uh, orbitals. I don't have a lot of space for the orbital fat, so I'm going to go and move this up. Let's 
smooth this out. Okay, let's get the eye shape. Firstly, make sure we define the bottom eyelid. Create some space here for the caruncular. Some volume on the top eyelid. The top light eyelid kind of rests upon the sides here. I don't have too much resolution to do this correctly, you just, I'll just mark it. Okay, uh, the eyes still look really big to me, so I'll keep working on that till I get it right. Flate. I think maybe we have a little bit too much space here. Now make sure those eyes follow the eyeball. Just like that. Fill in some orbital fat. Again and again, till we get it right. Now the things, the thing about the orbital fat is, it's it can be uneven throughout the eye because it's it's sitting in three different fats: uh, a nasal, medial, and narrow. And each of these fats, depending on the person, can contain more fat than the other. Usually most people have the most in the nasal one. So I'm just going to stick with that. Now I'm going to, uh, first let's clean this up a little, so I'm just going to give this a higher resolution and just give some depth here. How far in does this go? Okay. Now I'm going to drop the top uh, orbital fat now that I have a setup going in. 
but to make this happen I'm first going to merge uh, I'm going to merge uh, not merge but zero mesh this and then I'm going to uh, kind of mask out the eyes and create a polygroup from them so I could uh, go between the orbital fats uh, no no it's not uh, that's just the guy I'm making from uh, memory anyways I'm going to zero mesh this firstly let's duplicate it just in case and I'm going to go into curve strength uh, 75 uh, target poly count uh, 100 is okay you can go 50 and subdivide and project let's wait it out okay now I'm going to mask the eyelids and now I'm going to create polygroups from that so I'm going to go into polygroups and I'm going to hit group by masked okay now I can go and subdivide this further project by hiding the eyeballs first why do I have three eyeballs though? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it might look like Nikolai Costa without because this is uh, the last character I'm making. So maybe I'm doing some shapes uh, that I remember from him. I don't know. But this is just. Uh, a doodle. I'm not using reference currently. So now that I have this, I'm going to build that hanging eyelid skin. Hmm. Before I build it though, I'll need to mask this a little bit better. like this uh, poly groups group masked I'm going to use the standard brush to spool this out since he's frowning this is going to hang a little bit more than usual just going to pull it down don't worry we are going to zero mesh this make sure that eyelid skin is closely following uh, the eyelid itself then it has a little bit of a corner around right around here now this is as we go towards the uh, nasal orbit of fat which is a little bit thicker usually Now, since this guy is looking like a alien, I'm going to step back a little. Before zero meshing, I'm just going to make sure I look at it from a distance and readjust some of the shapes around the eyes. 
So I'm going to give him a Karankula. Make sure I tighten up those eyelids here. going to get the eyes in Some more bits of fat. Yeah, definitely I have a problem with this corner around here. It's a little bit too harsh, so I'm just going to smooth it out and re-establish it. going to go and just move those eyelids a little, create a shape for them. this stage I'm just making sure that I'm tightening up the model Usually looking from a distance helps me to adjust proportions and shapes a little bit better. You know, a bigger distance like this shows me a lot of problems with the, the model. Definitely need to make the chin a little wider, I think. It would look a lot better like this. And I would push the nasal labial folds further. And here I feel like we are missing that zygomaticus minor muscle, so I need to re establish it as well. We just don't have that plane change that we need, so I'm just going to build on top of it. And 
I'll make the nose a little wide around here. Thick eyelids will help this I would look at uh, the eyebrows from the bottom here and I can see that we need to adjust that shape kind of give this a little bit of an expanding towards the back side As we said, this is a male, so this needs to be quite thick. So, it's uh, about time I start taking in some questions while finishing this up. So, I'm going to go through the chat, and uh, if you haven't asked me a lot of questions, now is the time to start asking, and I'll begin answering. Just one second, give me a second here, so I get this looking presentable. Okay guys, uh, going into the chat now, I'll continue scoping while answering some questions. So, let's see. What would you advise for best everyday practice in head sculpting? To use some photo references to use using an uh, anatomic atlas, so just by imagining. Uh, I would advise doing all of these things. Uh, I would usually start with uh, just uh, using uh, anatomy, learning anatomy, and just free sculpting like I did, but you know, with some reference. So I, I would hold on to not sculpting, uh, onto sculpting without reference because that's a little bit harder, and you need you need a little bit of experience to do that. Uh, I would say. Practicing likeness would be the hardest hardest one, so you should go into that in the end. But if you feel like it, just do it. So uh, as long as you're passionate about it, as long as you're feeling happy doing it, uh, you're going to do well. well. I can see some Bulgarians here enjoying my alien. Can you explain some proportions around the nasal area, such as length, width, etc.? Hmm, well, basically, the nose would be, uh, if we go into an orthographic view, the nose should be about, let's fix the proportions now. Uh, the nose should equal uh, the eyes, which should equal the outside, the eye corner to the ear. 
so that's the five kind of spaces kind of the five uh, planes of the the face from a front so one would be the ear to the eye corner the next one eye corner to eye corner and the third one is the nose and then again we have the eye and again eye corner to ear uh, now in terms of uh, the nose two other stuff I as I already said the bottom of the zygomatic process should align with the bottom of the nasal cavity which is you know right about here you know we have a little bit of skin below it uh, what else about the nose uh, nose tip to nose uh, to eyebrows should equal nose tip to chin tip to eyebrows to hairline so for example the hairline of this guy would be right around here if I measure it by the nose of course he might be a little bold so for example it might start like this something like this But yeah, in general, uh, those are some some proportions I can think about uh, for the nose, around the nose. Yeah, uh, I hope it's going to be recorded. Yes, uh, how to analyze photo reference correctly? Uh, that's that's a long subject. That's actually going to be the first lection. But in general, oh, let me just get some reference here here's my latest character I'm making as I said Jamie uh, how do I analyze uh, it's a mess I know uh, I'm not an organized person but uh, okay so for example in terms of proportions I would use uh, autographic references like this one here or this one here uh, autographic would mean something that doesn't have a high perspective uh, usually those are images like uh, images made from a distance photos made from a distance and if they are high res enough you can zoom in on them crop them and get a good idea about the proportions in terms of shapes uh, I would get something with harsh shadows and highlights maybe that's not the this is a really good one that I recorded from a YouTube uh, clip uh, you can see here the zygomatic process, the masseter connecting to it, the depressor, uh, the depressor muscle, and the molar fats kind of creating this uh, plane change. Uh, another one, which would be a good one. This one is a really good one to just get an idea about the forms. In terms of reading. Uh, you should be mindful of some things for example the ear position now since Jamie uh, I mean Nikolai the actor I think he's about 40 so you know he hasn't aged that much so you can tell uh, a lot by his ears because as we said they should be aligned with the nose the ears and in this case, uh, if I'm making a reference, uh, if I'm working from this reference on proportions, for example, I would need to know that his head is tilted forward, meaning uh, the nose doesn't line with the ears. That's because the head is tilted forward, the nose dips down, and the ears come up. If you look at the camera right now, what I'm doing, this is uh, how I judge the angle by the nose and the ear position. Another one, hmm. yeah, I can't think of another one right now, but uh, I think those are some nice tips. Uh, of course, there are more. We can go into reading planes, reading highlights, reading shadows, but Dainitas had a questions as well, so I hope that helps you. Uh, oh, wait, uh, I wasn't showing you, I was showing you the wrong screen, so yeah. I opened up some reference. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. So what I was showing you is reading the uh, face, uh, the angle. So you can see the nose here. From exa for example, for this one is below the ears. 
meaning uh, the head is slightly tilted forwards. Another one I was showing is a uh, reference for proportions. I would use something like this, which is more autographic, and I would read the proportions a little bit better. In terms of uh, shapes and volumes, I would use something with harsher shadows and more visible highlights. So more contrast and, you know, a little bit of a uh, more intense lighting, like this. Something like this, which I uh, kind of recorded from a print screen from a YouTube video. So I'm sorry, I just... Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I didn't know I had it on the other screen. Okay, is it po possible to start sculpting heads every day without basic knowledge of anatomy? It's possible, uh, I wouldn't suggest it. Where did you get your knowledge of anatomy? So many places. Uh, so so I, I think I already recommended a book, uh, Anatomy for Sculptors. Uh, there are two volumes. One is entirely for facial sculpting and... Um, uh, facial sculpting and uh, expressions. The other one uh, covers the entire body. It's really good anatomical book for sculptors. Uh, how to analyze photo reference? I already answered that. Uh, da, 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 da. We can't see the pictures. Yes. Uh, on my course, uh, I would like my students to focus on just one head. Uh, where do you look for reference? Uh, there are some good websites out there. So, for example, one of those websites would be... Uh, well, now I forget the name. Uh, wait, I have a logo of it. Ah, Getty. So, Getty Images for actors is really good. So, we already... I already showed you how much reference I got for Costa Dow. You can see 5,000 pictures. Obviously, Google, for example, uh, images. Let's see. Uh, so, this is in Bulgarian, so I'm going to translate to you. So, we go to set. Okay, can you guys see me? Uh, I got reconnected on the OBS. So, uh, if you can see me, I'll just continue. Just write in the chat if you can see me and hear me. Okay, thank you. Uh, and yeah, uh, I would go into similar images, go into here. Uh, there's another website that I used to use. It's actually a Russian website, and I just kind of forgot. Uh, I'll go and see if I can get the link. Oh, uh, yeah. So, starwiki.org. Uh, has smaller amount of images but the images are really rare and really good for example we have Angelina Jolie and those images are from different uh, photo shoots meaning they're going to be really high quality all of them and yeah for example Angelina Jolie uh, you can get you know the more famous people here Brad Pitt has some really good ones and those all are photo shoots Okay, this is a really good reference, for example, a really, really good one. Uh, yeah, that's about the reference, really quickly. Uh, okay, I'll continue sculpting, and you can continue asking me some questions. Let me just get this guy looking uh, not so much like an alien in the meantime. Just get the chat. Hi, I'm a little bit late. Just joined. You're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. How do you know I'm doing great if you just joined? Though? Seems to me you're lying. <laughs> I 
that is a little bit too thick. I'll just mask this out. Now I'll just work on the eyelids. They kind of have like this spiraling towards the corner and they are kind of layered like this Now to push the eyelid in just like that. Again guys, uh, you can ask me any questions about the course, about my process or whatever. Keep them coming and I'll be answering right now. I have the chat on the side so now is the time. I look scared. The question about my artistic background was good. I seem to have missed. Do you have a classic sculpting background or studied anything on your own? Uh, studied everything on your own? I kind of studied everything on my own. Uh, I I used to draw as a kid. I don't know. Uh, I don't have like a classical education in uh, arts. Uh, such a stupid survey, but can't, how to learn anatomy without a teacher? Uh, just read, practice, and uh, that's about it. Uh, or you can get into a medical university, but I don't think it's worth it if you just want to learn anatomy for sculpting. That's why we have that book, Anatomy for Sculpting. Let's carve in the eyelid, uh, the iris. I think the eyes are too far apart right now, so I'm going to go and move this iris, uh, not iris, this eyeball. Like this, and I'm going to move just like that. Maybe now he doesn't look like an alien. Uh, can you tell me about the whole process of making a character, the programs, and how much time you spend on average? That's a really good one. Uh, yeah, the whole process, uh, as I said, I'd usually start with a high poly uh, and sculpt it in ZBrush. I would then need to uh, retopologize this high poly. Uh, so basically, any two like 3ds Max, Maya, or Blender 
could do that also you can do the UVs in that and also the hair in that you would need to texture it I would say substance painter in for a game character is really good if you're more into the movie industry or cinematics or whatever Mari I think would be the tool even though me myself I'm not using it I don't use Mari uh, now in terms of uh, Rendering, I do my presentations in Marmoset. You can use an engine like Unreal as well or Unity to present real time. Uh, did I miss on something? Uh, you would need a baking software. There's a free one like Xnormal, for example. On average, how much time do I spend? It depends on the character, but I would say about 150 to 200 hours for a trip away character. Uh, now, if I have somebody with a lower budget, I can do it a lot faster. Just so I make worth of you know the money I'm getting depends. As a freelance, it really depends. Depends on my client. Depends on the concept. the budget but yeah uh, if I wanted to make something for my portfolio for example on a head I spend between 50 to 100 hours just for the head and but I wouldn't say I'm like a really fast guy uh, I take my time with things I think you can be a lot faster than that Let's make this bold guy, give him some hair. So I'm just going to use the them standard. What's better, freelance or studio? You're asking a freelancer. <laughs> What do you think I'm going to answer? Obviously, uh, for example, if you're from uh, a smaller country, uh, a poorer country with not a lot of studios, not really good salaries, uh, I would think about going in a studio only if I was from the US, the UK, or maybe China. Even though China, uh, I'm not sure if they offer their own people uh, as much as uh, as much as they offer foreigners. Uh, I would actually, uh, oh, Korea and Japan, for example, have really big salaries as well. Now, uh, since most of you are from Russia or Ukraine, I would say go for freelance uh, without a doubt. Just especially in terms of money, in terms of you know improving as well uh, when you're a freelancer you have a lot more time you're making more, more money yes you don't have uh, the best project or projects all the time you're a little bit stressed out in the beginning when you don't have a lot of clients uh, which is tough it can be tough until you know you get the hang of things I understand but it's uh, completely wor uh, worth it in my opinion because I've went through all of that. Now the bonuses of going in a studio, if you have like a really good studio in your country with some really top dogs, you can maybe learn a lot from them. But you can also learn a lot from yourself and just spending time and saving up time in terms of uh, uh, not traveling to work you know, working whenever possible, whenever you feel like it this helps you improve as well you know being in a good shape
I've seen we will be using Texturing XYZ. Can you tell me more about it? Yes, um, I use Texturing XYZ uh, as base for both my texture and also my skin details. The way I apply it is through ZWrap. So basically, I take uh, I take uh, a plane. I make a plane. I apply a texture on top of it. And you can actually find this workflow for the ones who are not going to remain on the course. Are you interested in this? You can find this workflow with the ZWrap. Just write in Google texturing XYZ ZWrap. Uh, you basically make a plane with the texture and then just wrap it around the uh, model and after you wrap it around uh, you you uh, transfer the texture to the mesh that's basically it and then you apply those displacement maps you create geometry from the, uh, from them uh, in the you know in the faces of pores wrinkles or whatever then you have an albedo map, utility map from the multi-channel faces that is and using those excuse me uh, using those uh, you can make some really good realistic textures and results uh, it, it saves a lot of time, yes you use it as a base but it's a really really good base and it saves a lot of time and I believe it's pretty much an industry standard nowadays to know how to do this uh, for example now I can't say this I think so I had like a trip away title and they were using texturing XYZ on all of the characters and what we would do is just uh, uh, we would just paint really basically just stylize the texture XYZ since the title was a little bit stylized we would just stylize it a bit in painter and that would be it the texturing process the, the texturing process Now, as we go towards the end of this lecture, I'm still going to remain for 20 minutes to half an hour just to get a good result and answer some more questions if they come up. I uh, just want to repeat, if you still want to kind of, uh, if you still want to be a part of the course, you can do so. Just contact the curator. Uh, as I said, if you have deals, uh, for co if you want deals for colleagues or groups, you can still contact the curator. There are some spaces left uh, in terms of uh, this lecture. This is an introduction, basically just me scoping, talking about the, uh, talking about stuff, talking about my process. And when we get into the actual course, uh, we will be going over a lot of these things, but in a lot more detail. So, for example, I would go over the first lecture, you know, just building some basic forms, primary forms correctly from reference, gathering reference, reading reference correctly uh, planning ahead for what a portrait will look like we will go over you know uh, secondary details scoping uh, secondary territory details not details but volumes excuse me there's a difference what else uh, we will go into Texturing XYZ, texturing uh, with painter. Uh, obviously, we'll go into detail with anatomy. Uh, it's not entirely an anatomical course, of course, uh, but I will go into anatomy and try and help you a lot with feedbacks in terms of anatomy and structure. When we build our model, we will start from a skull, so I'll basically build a skull from a sphere, and on top of that skull, I'm going to build the muscles, the fat tissue and you know all around it to create the face so uh, yeah you can learn a lot by that what did I just do I need to make the irises bigger the iris should be around 
Oh, yeah, I know what I did. Should be about one third of the entire uh, eyelid. So something like this. I still feel like the head should be... Uh, this actually looks like Jorah Mormon from, from Game of Thrones. <laughs> I don't know why. Looks too, uh, He looks like him a, a little bit. I don't know if you agree. Again, I feel like the cranium should be a little bit bigger. And, you know, obviously I need to fix the shape from different angles. Right now I messed it up a lot. Let's go to the lower subdivision just so we have an easier time moving this. The, the neck should be a little thicker. I'm making a male at the end of the day. And again, the cranium is not as big as it should be. We should make it a little bit bigger. definition to the hair here would be okay. Okay guys, uh, let me know if you have any final questions coming in before I close down the show. <laughs> um, we have still 15 minutes to work on. Hair creation process. Yes, I can tell you. Uh, basically, uh, what we do for games and real-time rendering in general. Though so you can now get uh, spline and you know hair grooming and whatever into Unreal, for example, you can get hair gen. But usually, we'd use hair cards, which is basically a plane, and on that plane, we make a hair texture with opacity map baked in. Uh, and then we adjust the hair planes, we make a lot of hair planes around the head, you know, making a hairstyle and along with the hair textures and the hair shading it looks like a good hair. Now what I use for this is I use hair generator for, uh, you can get it on ArtStation for the hair textures. Uh, also for blender hair I use uh, for the hair cards I use hair tool for blender from Gumroad. Uh, if I was doing uh, hair on 3ds Max, I do uh, use Ornatrix. I don't use Maya, so I can't tell you about uh, hair gen. I know it's really good, but I've never used it. The process itself, it's not a hard process, but it's tedious. I mean that it's, it's not pleasant to do, not, at least not for me. Uh, it simply takes time and dedication. It's not something, it's not like uh, facial sculpting, it's not hard. You know, you can do it, but you need to be patient, you need to be careful. Uh, yeah, that, that's that. 
what we'll be using, uh, we'll be using Blender for the course, so that means head to for Blender from Gumroad. And then I'll set up a shader, which is a very simple shader in Marmoset, a double anisotropic reflection shader, which works really good for your tone hair. The cool thing about Blender is uh, it has it's really really good for hair with that too. By the way, I actually like it more than Ornatrix, and Ornatrix costs six hundred dollars. Blender is completely free, so uh, you shouldn't cry. You should get Blender. Uh, the hair too is about twenty to thirty dollars. How many uh, hair cards, how many polys should the hair cards be if optimized for our final production? Well, really depends uh, on the character, but usually uh, now we work in triangles in the game industry. Uh, that's because, uh, actually, I don't know why. Uh, maybe because there's some difference, you know. 20,000 polys doesn't necessarily mean 40,000 triangles because you have might have more but in terms of poly count uh, I would say I would go on average uh, characters about 10,000 polys for hair uh, for main, more main characters I would go up to 20,000 uh, or more you use the new version of Marmoset yes I was a tester an early tester for uh, for them uh, I don't like it. Well, I'll be honest. I like the I like the texturing and everything, but the rendering itself, it's the ray tracing doesn't make it real time anymore. It takes time. It's I wanted to escape waiting for my characters to render and now I have to wait again on each shot. How do you record a, vo a video on this? You need to wait an entire day just just to get a video done. So yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of not a fan of the the way they went. They went. I like the texturing. I'm, I'm a big fan of that, but I don't like the ray tracing. It just takes too much time. I believe if they had just made the improvements on uh, lighting and shadows that they did without the ray tracing and just worked a little bit more on the global illumination it would have been better yes you it would be good if you are familiar with the software at least with the interface uh, even though you can follow me step by step at least be good with the interface <laughs> I use uh, Wake and Bamboo I recently got an XP pen deco something whatever but uh, I still can't get used to it uh, so yeah right now I'm using my old one because I can't get used to the new one uh, if anybody had a problem with an XP pen let me know because I have problems as well. I think I can't. The drivers are fighting or something from the old tablet, uh, but it's not working as it should be. It's uh, there are interruptions. How we would text? It's quite boring to render models instead of using. Uh, exactly, it's boring. It's tedious. It's not enjoyable. Yes, it looks better in the end, much better, but it takes away all the fun. And I'm working what I'm working because I'm having fun. How we will be texturing the clothes? We will be using smart materials we will show us to create something of which clothes? We will be using we will be doing just a bus. We're not making an entire character. Okay, so yes I will show you how to texture using your own layers, but we will not be making an entire characters. For the bust I will show you how to texture it. Uh, and obviously, using smart materials is nothing bad in it. Bad in it, just make uh, smart combinations of smart materials. Uh, create your own. Improvise. The good thing about Substance Painter is you can improvise along with it.
will Russian classes be open as well for that course? What do you mean, Russian classes? Uh, do you mean like uh, translation or something? Uh, there will be Russian subtitles, okay? So if that's what you mean, then yeah. Yes, indeed, there will be. Why does this look so bad? Let me just smooth it out. Okay, let's break symmetry for this and call it done. Russian language. No, I can't speak Russian language, so no. <laughs> but uh, there will be Russian translation. My parents always told me to learn Russian, but I never listened, so you have to excuse me. Okay, let's break the symmetry. I'm going to turn X off, press X, so I turn symmetry off. I'm going to start building now. Some irregularities here and there. Now the left eye is usually a little bit more close. Maybe right eye. A little bit more fat to the right side would work. Okay guys, final questions, let me know. Regarding the course, regarding work, regarding sculpting, life, whatever. How does the chin and muscles attach to the jaw ball? Do you mean the depressor muscles? Basically, they go below it. So you have uh, 
the depressing muscles here, uh, also the mentalis muscle here, the depressor labii, the depressor inferioris. They all wrap right under the jaw, right around here, and shoot fibers. So, for example, the uh, mentalis muscle kind of shoots them like this. Then you have the depressor inferioris right around here. This is this part here is the depressor inferioris. The uh, superior depressor muscle here. Uh, kind of wraps around here, sends in those fibers like this. Will there be any homework for next time? The whole idea of this uh, lection is to show you how to practice, so I would expect you guys I wouldn't give you anything specific since I haven't started anything specific. But I would expect you to practice until next week. Because uh, I would need you to be in good shape when starting. Uh, so basically, speed scopes is your exercise. You can also pose them and I will give you feedback. Uh, but try and do, if you have the time of course, it's homework in general is not uh, a requirement it's I just advise on doing it because it, it's a big part of the the money as well you know me giving you feedback and homework uh, now uh, just try and do a speed scope a day even if it's one hour sit down and scope it what do you suggest for promotion for searching for clients? Instagram art station, art station. I suggest art station. Uh, for the past, I th I think it's three years. I haven't looked for work. Clients come to me from art station. I just sit on my ass, and clients offer me work. So invest in your portfolio. Invest your time into becoming good at what you do and make sure you have an art station and you're going to get work make sure you know what the average salaries are for artists don't push the price down for the rest of us uh, it doesn't matter from which part of the world you are uh, make sure you work uh, you have a good rate depending on your skill level and yeah invest in your portfolio that's that's the advice I always give. Just take your time and make personal work and make it as good as possible. Are we getting the feedback by sending our work somewhere or posting them and linking you? Uh, I think we're going to use that Facebook uh, variation. Uh, I think it was called Workspace. So you're going to, the curator can tell you that. But you basically upload it in something like a Facebook group and I will comment below it, do paint overs, whatever. Can you give us some feedbacks regarding our portfolios in the future? Yes and yes. Even I plan on doing some uh, more streams in the future. I can do portfolio reviews, whatever. Uh, but uh, right now we wouldn't have you know, the time. But in the course, maybe, why not? in the course but also down the line I plan on doing it uh, for free just streaming for fun because I, I enjoy streaming it helps me uh, I still have a hard time focusing on work and talking and talking so that's why I I enjoy streaming because it helps me improve in that regard and if I want to be a teacher I need to improve in that regard The minimum wage, uh, I would say if you're a junior artist, uh, you should look to freelance in no less than $20 per hour if you're a beginner. Uh, in terms of if you work in a studio, it, it just depends on where you're working from. Uh, I wouldn't imagine in my country or you in Ukraine, as far as I've heard as well, the, the wages are very low. Uh, 
Uh, so I have, you know, previous students of mine. One of them is uh, in the stream, Katya. Uh, she told me about some of the Russian Ukrainian studios, for example, uh, offering her work. Uh, it was very bad in terms of uh, payment. They were also very unprofessional. So yeah, uh, if I was. Uh, from the US maybe I'd go in a studio but I definitely prefer freelancing and if you're freelancing uh, and you are you know you can you have your in order to freelance you need to be able to work on your own though meaning it doesn't mean you have to be like a really good artist but you need to be able to find your way around all of the software and provide work with feedback uh, and provide good assets you should start at at least twenty dollars and build up from that. You increase your price by increasing the quality in your portfolio. Also, while having work, if more offers come to you, just increase your price then. Give a very high price and see if people agree. And this way you know how much people value your work. Uh, you do this because you already have works anyways, uh, you can't really accept the project right now, but you try uh, with a, a very high price to see where you're at, where you're at, and uh, yeah, you, you don't lose anything, you don't lose the offer because you can't accept it immediately anyway. You, you need to tell them, if they agree on your price, you just say, okay, but I can do it after, let's say, a month or whatever. Uh, another advice I can give you is uh, make sure you you schedule well if you're freelancing. Uh, I have a problem with always falling back uh, on schedule, so you need to be very careful with that. When you don't have a boss sitting on your head telling you something, sometimes you might relax or go into. My problem is going into personal projects too much. I've tried to not do that as much, but I still end up doing it. So make sure you do your your jobs first and your personal work after. Sadly, that's the case. Okay, uh, well, I think you guys don't have any more questions, so maybe I can close down this stream. Uh, I can make this model available first. You can guys get it and just, I don't know, have fun with it. Uh, maybe you can polish it. I still need to polish it, so maybe if you want, you can do that for me. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I'll show you now how I'm going to upload it upload it so keep in mind I just updated today to the newest version of ZBrush uh, they just I think they released it today and it asked me to update so in order to open this you need to have the latest version or maybe I can just export it as an OBJ so you can all get it uh, so this is like a small present from me Christmas present Let's name this old guy looks like Jora Mormon a bit. And I'm going to upload it to WeTransfer. Thank you guys, thank you for staying. It was my pleasure. I hope you enjoyed. I hoped you I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> And uh, I hope to see some of you, uh, or most of you, in the course. And let's get on to it. Here's the link. 
that's a present from me. Have a good one. Thank you for staying. Thank you for your time. I hope I wasn't too rusty. I hope you enjoyed the course. I needed some time to get into sculpting shape. So see you around and bye. Bye from me, guys. Now, how do I turn this off?